to frustrate his fishing business. When I was cray fishing, the seals didn't worry you at all. But when you were fishing for Trevally, they used to come up and pinch a lot of fish and damage a lot of gear. So it's quite nice making people um, come along and I get some of that money back now without any doubt at all. I say to people that after three hours on Rob's boat, people think they're, they're leaving or uh, saying goodbye to a long lost friend. He seems to be able to engage his, his customers in, a, in a, such a relationship that they actually feel like they've known him for a long, long time and they go away thinking that they, they, that was part of life's journey. Last year, Bruny Island Charters carried 20,000 passengers and turned over $1.6 million. And business is up by a third this year. Rob Pennicott and his wife, artist Mache Bolter, have built their dream home on a piece of land he used to camp on as a child. They're raising two children, Mia and Noah, on Bruni Island. We hope that when they're you know, adults that they'll look back at their childhood as being very, very special. Um, most days, um, probably three, four times a week, we go fishing, snorkelling, um, play a lot of sport and uh, the, the local school is very spe special, small numbers and fantastic teachers and we think it's just, you know, at this stage of our life couldn't be better. I think it's really, really important if you've got an idea to be passionate about what you do because then if you go through harder times it's easier to get through them. Rob pennicott has been approached by tourism authorities to set up similar operations in other states. But it's hard to imagine anywhere with the unique mix of the Tasmanian coastline. What's the deepest satisfaction of this? I think it's the buzz that everyone who comes on my boat trip gets on a high. It then rubs off to your staff and to yourself and, you know, it's a pleasure coming to work and to do that day after day in an environment like this. I think it's just a fantastic working environment. What a great lifestyle and a beautiful location. And that's all we have time for today. Don't forget we have plenty of information on the website about all these stories and more. And what have we got for you tomorrow? We'll hover around Broome and its marine life, walk the scenic Hyson Trail in South Australia and hit the road in a wicked van. Another great show tomorrow, so I'll see you for all that and more. Bye for now. and I plead with you to take this chance. The struggle to cross a vast continent and build the telegraph line that would connect Australia to the world. For £128,000, I will build this line to the north coast. Or God strike me, nine, trying. A wire through the heart, Tuesday on Constructing Australia. Wednesday. Celebrate a century of blood, sweat and tears. Enjoy the definitive story of the first 100 years of rugby league in Australia. St George shattered the defence's regular speeds towards the line. The heroes, the heartache and the triumph. What strength, what power, what a grand fight. Rugby league, the greatest game of all. A century of rugby league, Wednesday on Australian Network. Thursday. We want you to be more green. They're waging war on waste. So you're the eco-criminals I've been hearing about. As they try and turn lifelong habits Look at this. into eco-friendly living. This is your worm farm and I think it's going to be the perfect solution to your food scrap problem. Going green has never been so much fun. Oh my god, <laughs> that is foul. The efficient series, Wasted. Thursday. This week on English Bites, we're going to visit some rural Australian places. Today, it's a small, sleepy town in Victoria called Malakuta. 
there's an argument that's dividing the town. It's an argument over a new boat ramp on the town's beautiful beach. Dawn on Victoria's wilderness coast. It's aptly named. There's no development along the beach for almost 200 kilometres.